Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the final episode of Easy Going Survival Season 2. I can't believe we finally hit the end of this world. Guys, this world means a lot to me. Um, this is the world that restarted my channel. Um, all that stuff. We're gonna increase my render distance. Uh, so, you know, I played on this from the beginning of the pandemic through what is now towards the end of the pandemic, at least in the United States where I'm from. And guys, it's just, this has been the journey, and I can't wait to use this episode to reflect on that journey with you guys, talk about the projects we've done, take a look at the projects we've done, and maybe give you guys a sneak peek of some future plans, which you'll be seeing just a couple days after this video releases. Alright guys, let's get into the world tour. Our journey through this world begins over very close to our main base, over in this area, where it was about a year and a couple months ago. I logged on to a random seed right in this region, right around here. I logged on, I was like, this is it, we're restarting the channel, and so we went. I immediately took a look about my terrain, and we made our very first starter base slash home down in this cave right here, which to this day still has our first enchanting table, our first nether portal right here, as well as our very first netherwork farms, as well as... A couple chests, that's the remnants of our storage system over here. We have, yeah, I guess quite a lot of really good OP gear over here. This is our first little area. We, of course, built some other stuff around here. Very shortly after, we built these up a couple starter farms over here. We also built this massive hostile mob farm, which produced tons of drops and was our gunpowder, string, bone supply for the whole season. Uh, that thing was really nice. This is our first big farm that we built. Now, if you guys want any interest, I can do a live stream where we talk about how each farm works, but we're not going to be doing that in this video at a time. We have so many farms to go over, um, and yeah, it would simply be impossible to talk about how each farm works. So if you want to see something like that, let me know. We can maybe do a live stream where we look at every single farm more in detail. But that being said, yeah, this is the first farm we built, the Hostile Mob Farm. Next, what we kind of did is we were filtered around this area, so we built up a slime farm over here which produced tons of slime. I AFK'd this thing about once and never AFK'd it again. We even had a fancy uh, shulker box loaded over here, which is really cool. We also built up a tiny cactus farm in order to get some green dye. And we also built up a starter super smelter over here. Very basic design to get the glass we needed for yeah our, our mega base over there. We also have a couple other farms in this area I built later on. We got this one, which is, yeah, just a flower farm I used to get blue dye and other types of dyes as well, and seeds. We also built up a turtle farm here as well, where we were able to breed up a ton of turtles and yeah, collect their eggs for the gold farm we built. Next, after we built this area, we quickly changed our focus not to the main base. The next area we actually started work in was our villager district, which we got to via the nether. And in fact, we got there via the nether ceiling. So we pop over here. As you guys can see, since I last saw you, I did put some carpets down to make it look just a little bit nicer for everyone. Uh, fly on over here, we'll find our villager district portal. And real quick, I do apologize for the nether fog. Unfortunately, I did upgrade the world to 1.17 because I was planning to stay before I decided to start a new world. And Optifine has not come out yet. Um, or at least it's not compatible with fabric. So we got a little bit of a, a stuff going on here. Uh, so we have some fog, unfortunately. Nevertheless, this is our villager district, which was actually the only mega project we actually completed. Uh, there's this dirt right here, kind of in the way, which I will uh, just remove this right now, given it is the end of the season. This is the only mega area we actually technically finished, um, minus like a couple of things that are messed up. We first built up a village breeder here, which we also decorated in the form of, yeah, this cool like space age area. So, yeah, we got this villager breeder right here, which produced tons of villagers for us, which we then brought over to here, where we cured them, uh, infected, then cured them with this zombie converter to get really low trades, where we have a bunch of guys that sell one iron ingot for emeralds. Um, we got a lot of quartz here before 1.16 released, and also we got our OP farmers, we were able to get tons upon tons of emeralds. We also have a bunch of librarians over here. In fact, we have every single librarian in the game um, for every single type of book trade. And all these guys gave us very low trades for books in this section. And in this section over here, I didn't cure them just because they were the less useful books. 
Of course, in the villager area, we also built up an iron farm. This thing is really awesome. It's Nimbon's design. It served us super well. We were AFKing over here all the time in order to get tons upon tons of iron. And we probably have a lot in here. Yeah, as we speak. Yeah, we got about the whole chest of iron ingots. So this thing served us well. Now, the next place we visited after this, after we got our quartz from our villagers, after we got our super smelter to get glass, we started work on our main base. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I am pretty bad at this whole World War thing. Uh, not gonna lie, it's a little bit weird recording again, plus World Tours are like a special event, so I do apologize for that. But, we started the main base next, and this thing was a hell, this is by far, despite me not finishing up this terraforming, was the biggest project I have ever worked on in all of Minecraft. This is literally the biggest project I've ever done. This took hours upon hours. We placed tens of thousands of blocks. We dug out 50,000 blocks to make this diamond down here. Overall, this will honestly, I'll always remember this Minecraft base because this was truly my first mega base in my opinion. Like I've never built anything like this. And yeah, let's get into it. So the begin of, let's just take a look, you know, take all the sites in. As you guys can see, we got these couple outer rings, we got these beautiful crystals on top with beautiful towers to pair down below. We also got this bottom area, which of course is just also very, very beautiful. Um, we even got a good old zombie walking around. But yeah, so this is the main base. On top of here, we of course had our massive storage system that stored hundreds upon hundreds of different items. We even had some bulk storage over here. This is originally a shulker box storage system, but it broke in 1.16. So we just opted to replace it with a bunch of chests, and as you can see, we accumulated, yeah, quite a few of these items, to say the very least. Anywho, moving on within the storage system, if we actually hop back down below, we have a whole other region of our base down here, and this was, of course, the nether region of the base. I knew as soon as the one that 16 blocks came out, I wanted to build, and this was the end result. This is our main kind of nether building. I did have more plans for this area, but I am pretty happy with how it turned out. So if we pop down here, uh, we built a bunch of hallways. One of the first hallways we started working on was the supporter hallway, which let's go through and appreciate all our supporters back when we used to, you know, focus on this a bit more. First, we had Dark Knight, our very first supporter. In fact, the first person to hit that rank on Discord requested a meme machine. Let's see what we get. Yeet, Bad Luck Brian, Tube Rewind. Well, I don't even remember what Bad Luck Brian is. Not gonna lie. YouTube Rewind 2019, let's see if we can get another one. Full send, yes. Random meme machine, come down here and play with it. We also had a Gid had his face. Thank you for being a Discord booster at one time, Gid. Tropical Troop also hit it and requested a Avatar The Last Airbender-esque statue, which is what we build right here. And Truist 18 requested a giant sheep, which we reconstructed right there. Lightning, of course, Lightning Bolt. Lintex requested creepers that do not explode, which we can take a look at right here. As you can see, not blowing up. Really, really cool stuff. I'll fix this up. Just like so. If we move on from right there, we had a bunch of empty spaces, which thank you guys for all the other supporters who hit the rank. Thank you guys so much for the support on my channel. Yeah, I really appreciate it. We went from, when I first started this world, I had 200 subscribers about and now I have just hit 1800 as of recording this so yeah we went we've literally gained nine times the amount of subscribers over the course of the series which is also part of the reason why it's always going to be so special to me next we have our treasure hallway right here where of course we have a ton of heads and whatnot lying the walls and of course we have our treasure room over here with full sets of netherite diamond gold never got chain mail unfortunately we have a dragon egg dragon heads over here we got a bit of like a wither you know, thing over here. We got a villager thing right here. We got an end statue right here. We got a villager statue, and of course, our collection of music discs. Next season, I want to get all of them. We're building a record farm. Mark my words. And now we can move on to the other two hallways. Now, one hallway I actually, yeah, never built anything down this hallway. Um, it remained actually largely just, yeah, untouched, but nice aesthetic. Down here, we did build one thing. We built a massive 92 furnace super smelter, which overall, fantastic, fantastic stuff. Um, yeah, smelted all our items up. Ill Mango's design, great design. Uh, this thing was super, super useful. I just really love this room too. I just love what we did with it. It just looks great. I'm really proud of this 
although small, but very nice aesthetic build. Now, if we fly on up here, we've actually finished looking at the main base. Not a ton of function going on in this thing, but overall, a ton of aesthetic. And we are actually going to just add um, some time to make it day since the world is over. Um, yeah, this is such a fun build to work on. I'm so happy of how this turned out, and I hope you guys enjoyed the journey of working on this base as well. All right, guys, let's now hop to the industrial district, the last giant mega area before we look at some individual farms we've built. And we flew on over here. Perfect. Let's head on into the industrial district. Once again, this area is probably the least finished out of all of them. Um, I had big plans to build a couple more farms here and also do some terraforming. But overall, all the buildings are complete, which is great. We finished up the skyscraper, which is awesome, which is what we're actually in right now. But if we fly down here, this is where we had all our mega farms for the most part. Um, we had a ton of farms we ended up building over here. Of course, we had our mega storage system down here in this system, which we never built the access point to. This is the only part of the skyscraper we didn't technically finish up. So I am just going to mine in here. But we had our mega storage system in here where we stored... Yeah, just a bunch of drops um, from all of our farms in here, which was, yeah, just fantastic. Um, definitely lagging with that Optifine, though, in this area. Over here, we had a double-layer pumpkin and melon farm that produced tons of melons and pumpkins for us to trade. Right here, we actually had a bee breeder. In fact, I removed all of the hives uh, for the purpose of making sure it wasn't super laggy. And directly next door to this bee breeder, we actually had a honey farm. Which, because we didn't really plan our space too well, it actually merged with the skyscraper. But nevertheless, this is where we yeah, got our honeycomb, as well as our honey bottles, which we never did a ton of work with, to be honest. We never really used honey in too many of our contraptions. But we did use it in a couple, and it proved useful nonetheless. Coming around the corner, we got a carved pumpkin farm. And there, ooh, there's a creeper in there. Let's see if we're going to blow up my base uh, at the very end of the season. The reason we built this is actually because all of the, under all the carpet back at the main base, under that lower region, was all jack-o'-lanterns uh, that provided light source, and yeah, we used, yeah, uh, carved pumpkins, so this thing could just shear all the carved pumpkins and they collected in a very small storage system down below. Over here we had probably one of the most useful farms we built this season, which of course was our fantastic tree farm. All it produced was birch. We never built a mega tree farm, which is definitely something I want to contend with in the next season. But this thing produced tons of logs for us. We also converted it to a charcoal cooker as well, uh, which we could toggle on and off, which was also just super, super useful. Uh, before, we, of course, we built the Wither Skeleton Farm. Wrap it around the corner here. We'll come over to the concrete converter, which we never really used, to be honest. Um, but it was, it was nice to have while we had it. Um, Logical Geek Boy's design... Basically, yeah, blow up some concrete, and that's how it works. And we can get in and out just like so. And then coming over here, we got one of the biggest farms in terms of, you know, uh, land taken up is, of course, our Mega Sugarcane Farm, which, yeah, overall, excellent build. Got us lots of sugarcane, which is always fantastic. And that actually wraps up all the farms in the industrial district area. There are a few more I wanted to build. I did want to build crop farms, even though I had real no release for them. I did want to build a bigger tree farm as well as a cobblestone farm um, that automatically farm different log types as well as cobble. Uh, we never got around to that, but I do want to conquer farms in the next season, but in a slightly different way, which I'll kind of get into, I guess, at the beginning of the next season. But leaving this area, now let's go take a look at all the other farms we built, because we did build a hell of a lot of farms uh, beyond the two areas we've seen. We've already seen quite a lot of farms. We have saw the iron farm, all those farms, the mob farm. Um, as well as the flower farm. So we've seen quite a few farms, so we got a lot more to show. If we head on over to the end dimension, we can actually see two of our farms. So the first of which, this is not part of that for the record, um, is the obsidian farm that kind of based off Nembon Spine, kind of designed myself. Basically, we just sent items in here to keep um, this area loaded progressively. And every so often we sent an item through this portal, which as you guys know, Whenever an item goes through this, these blocks are regenerated. And we sat here and mined and got tons about tons of obsidian. Uh, I've now since taken it all out of here, but we got 
yeah, we have chests upon chests of obsidian uh, back at our base. So that was the obsidian farm, very small farm, also a very easy build. If we come on over here, we got another really awesome farm. So I need a lot of gray dye, so we actually built up a wither rooms farm, which is really cool. So we trapped a wither in this bedrock cage, which it constantly suits this chicken. Endermen fall down and then die. I kind of want to show you guys this one in action. So we fly up here. This is the AFK point for the farm. And if we take a look down there, we should see some Endermen spawn in. They run to an Endermite. Tons are dropping in now. They come down and they're just killed by the Wither. And they're teleporting right here. That's just because I'm in the area. If you're up there, they're actually unable to teleport, which is really cool. So they die from the Wither. We get their Wither Roses, and that is fantastic. And we also have a third and final farm, which is slightly broken from an explosion. I do apologize about that. But this is the Auto Wither Killer, actually made by, I believe, uh, currently, potentially former Strangecraft Mother, Fast Jazz. Um, this farm is great. We could automatically produce a ton of Wither Stars. Basically, what you do is you AFK over here um, in this minecart. Just go back and forth, play Soul Sand, and then it'd be automatically killed up there. Yeah. So it's automatic nether stars because when you have an OP wither skeleton farm, it's kind of gets tedious to kill a bunch of withers over and over again. Now, if we fly through this end portal, we should get back to the base and we can go take a look at the other two farms I want to show you guys next, which are actually right here just in the nether. So we have three nether based farms that are kind of around the base on top of the bedrock roof. The first of which is a hoglin farm. Now this thing is yeah, OP, they say the least. So... Super small pad, all that happens is the hoglin spawn, and they run right into the fire, and gives us tons of pork chops, and I AFK'd this thing once, and I never ran out of food again. That's how OP it was, and it wasn't just food, it's also leather as well. It's an OP farm, to say the least. Too OP, to be honest. Um, and we AFK'd for it way up in the sky. The other OP farm we got in the nether is, of course, our gold farm, which is right here. Much harder to see now that we don't have anti-fog from Optifine. But yeah, so we have this awesome gold farm right here, which produced tons upon tons of gold. In fact, um, just chested the stuff. And this was once again another really fun project to work on. I kind of want to show you guys this in action. Uh, let's slap to the AFK point. There's a block missing for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. If I press C and... B, I toggle free cam, we can actually take a look at this thing in action. This is by far one of the most satisfying farms, besides the other skeleton farm we built. Just look at all the big men raining down. It's so cool. So satisfying to watch. Oops. And we can come back up here. Next, we can go take a look at the gas tier farm, which is this way. In fact, if we just keep flying this way, yeah, we'll come up on the gas tier farm. So this farm didn't get too much to stuff. We have K'd it once. Basically, we're in a soul sand valley. Only gas can spawn here. They spawn here, killed by the wither roses, and then their drops collect in here. I actually designed this myself, so you can actually find a tutorial for that on my channel if you're interested. And of course, I don't have more rockets. I'll probably just give them to myself, considering this world is over. Next, if we hop over here, we got an overworld farm, and this is actually our raid farm. So this thing, once again, very OP. Um, give us tons of heads, uh, all the witch drops as well, uh, but most importantly, it gave us emeralds, and lots of emeralds, in fact, which is, yeah, fantastic. So, overall, great farm, raised work design, um, cool farm, definitely recommend building it. I know there's a lot of faster raid farms out there, but this is my first raid farm project, so I was a little intimidated by the concept of it, and I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Actually, this is the video I built where Currywick commented on it, so that was pretty cool. Not gonna lie. Um, I missed this thing. Um, I need to get back in the habit of recording, guys. All right, I gotta, I gotta get back on it. It's always weird recording after so long. Next, if we fly out this way, we're actually gonna come across our piglin bartering farm. Almost, almost there. Almost there. I'll meet you guys over there once I find it. Here we go. Our good old piglin bartering farm where we had, yeah, a ridiculous quantity of piglins in here, actually. Um, yeah, this thing was great. Basically, we put gold up in it. This is also my design. This thing is pretty fast. It has 24 piglins, but it can be modified to hold more. 
And if we come in here, what we'll find is we unfortunately spawn that another portal, but we actually store all the drops in the overworld. And it's kind of laggy from all those items, but we got tons of blackstone, gravel, uh, spectral arrows, iron nuggets, string. This is a, such a productive farm. Leather, obsidian, soul sand, fire charges, prying obsidian, and ender pearls, as well as quartz, and of course, all the unstackables like soul speed and whatnot. So that was the piglin bartering farm. Very cool farm, very useful. I mean, automatic quartz, gravel, and blackstone are all three things. Yeah, I used a lot, so. But now we're gonna go over to the crown jewel of all the farms I built. This is by far the best farm I'd say I built, the most productive, the most involved. And that, of course, is Nembon's Fortress Farm. This thing is a project, the redstone for this was challenging. You're building in the nether, it's challenging. You're clearing lava, that's challenging. Um, overall, you're just, yeah. Challenging farms to build, you know, constant dying and lava, and it was also super far away, so overall, a hard farm, but boy was the result awesome. So we punched a hole in the bedrock roof to get down to this farm, which we coincidentally had a pretty decent elevator, and we had a nice long hallway to get down to the actual farm. Of course, we spawn proof this entire area. I'm going to show you guys the farm in action in just one second, um, but basically... We did, we turn this lever on and reopen that trap door. I'm actually going to put on my, I'm going to try to put on, oh, it's lagging. I need to get off the fine again, slash sodium. But basically the way this thing works is we just sit here and we just kill mobs. Um, it's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Um, if we go into free cam, as you can see, the mobs fall down this tube. But they're essentially just propelled by these slime block sweepers. It's kind of laggy. I do apologize. I actually reduce my uh, render distance here. They're all just pushed in, funneled down, and we spawn proof the entire fortress uh, all around it to make sure other mobs wouldn't spawn. And we built it primarily in a warp forest for the reason that being that not that many mobs spawn in the warp forest, meaning that most of the mob caps going to be residing in this farm, and allowing us to kill basically as many wither skeletons as possible. We could have made it faster had we, you know, spawn proof the entire area, but I mean, this thing was fast enough. We AFK'd it a few times and had enough beacons for the entire season. And down here we had our big storage system where sort of wither skeleton skulls, coal, more coal, blaze rods. This is by far one of the most useful drops. We use that for our fuel for the entire season. Bones upon bones. Well, some gold. Wasn't the most productive gold farm, but we got some nonetheless. And, of course, mob heads as well. All useful stuff. And this is actually, I believe, the last build we have to look at. So I'm just going to turn the farm off. Kill the rest of these mobs. And let's head back to the base to discuss statistics. I'm sure you guys are interested in some of the statistics I accumulated. So I'll meet you guys back there. And we're back at the mid base. I did set the time today by adding some time. Um, but yeah, guys, welcome back. How many days do we end up in this in the world? I'm assuming I didn't set the day. Day 2,500. 2,500 days in this Minecraft world. Let's take a look at some of the other statistics. Fred at Lamb, 11,000 times. Dealt 358,000 damage. Wow. How far do we? How far do we fly? Distance flown. 6,700. For about 3,000 kilometers by Elytra. That's a lot. We quit the game 827 times. Um, what else did we do? We jumped 218,000 times. We killed 140,000 mobs. We won 33 raids. <laughs> we triggered a lot of raids at the raid farm. We traded the villagers. Kind of curious about that. 52,000 times. And we played over 34 days in total of gameplay. That means basically over the last year, about a twelfth of my time was logged into this world, which is kind of crazy. And yeah, that's insane. We did a lot of stuff for this time. Some of the items, we mined 200,000 stone, 100,000 sand, about 50,000 blocks, both types of dirt, and just, yeah, a ridiculous amount. We mined 20,000 oak leaves alone. Um... Tons upon tons of stuff. In terms of breaking stuff, we broke six diamond picks. We broke one netherite pick. That was a fun time. And we broke, yeah, 71 shears. Very cool. 
times crafted. <laughs> crafted without, well, what, use 124,000 bow meal, 106,000 bricks, 96,000 gold ingots. Lots of stuff was crafted. Mainly stuff we farmed and then crafted into blocks. But we also crafted 20,000 white concrete powder and 27,000 stained glass, which all went to the base. So, yeah, yeah, we did craft a lot of blocks. Times used, very cool. We used our pick 300,000 times. We also placed throughout all the building we did 33,000 smooth stone blocks, 27,000 white stained glass, 20,000 concrete, and... About 12,000 jack lanterns, 12,000 that, 10,000 iron blocks. Yeah, we did a, we did quite a bit of uh, placing. Times picked up, nothing too interesting there. And times dropped. We dropped lots of gold nuggets on the ground, which, yeah, always very fun. Now moving on to mobs. Killed about 39,000 blazes. Killed, what's the next cool one? 30,000 endermen. About 600 evokers. Killed 500 magnitudes, I guess. Um, not bad. 30,000 pillagers. We killed 470 shulkers, 6,000 skeletons. We killed 3,000 vindicators. Killed 20 wandering traders. Wish we had killed more of those. 81 withers, 24,000 wither skeletons. And of course, 30,000 zombie piglins as well. So we killed quite a lot. Somehow, players killed me twice, which I'm not sure how. But yeah, guys, that is the end of the world. Unfortunately, we missed a couple of these things, um, which kind of sucks, but you know what? It's okay. We did well. We did well. I'm happy with what we did with this world. There's a lot we can improve upon for next season, such as finishing projects and maybe before moving on to other projects, uh, finishing up some. I definitely want to alter my playstyle a bit to try something new, which I think you guys will enjoy quite a lot. I've already picked out the seed and actually generated the new world, so I'm actually going to start playing that right after I record and edit this video, which I'm really, really excited. I haven't been this excited to play a new world since I yeah, started this one, which I think is the sign that it is time to move on. But I'll see you guys on Saturday, believe it or not, for episode one of Easygoing Survival Part 3. And I'll give you guys a hit. MS. That's a bad hit. Actually, that's not a bad hit. MS. MS. That's actually a physical illness. Uh, here's, here's, here's what I want to say instead. Hmm. Uh, Roomland. Roomland. That is the hint. Roomland. Alright. <laughs> Alright, guys. Have a good one. Peace out. Thank you guys for the support on this series. I loved it. This series is by far, I think, the most successful series I've ever done on my channel. And what better way to end that but with dying. Which we can't do because we're OP. Anyhow, before I end off the series, I will be leaving my stuff in a chest right here as well as all the ender chests, all the shulker boxes in my ender chest for you guys to enjoy. Other than that there goes, peace out. Sorry for this outro. I forgot how to do outros because it's been a while, but I'll be reacclimated very soon when we do Easygoing Survival Season 3 Episode 1 on Saturday. See you guys later. Bye.